the problem is people are living longer and they've got conditions like cancer, diabetes and dementia as well. Cancer, diabetes and... What was the last one? Hello, it's the Glasgow Dad Podcast. Coming up this week... Have you ever smoked? Oh, I. You take a drink? Of course. Uh, did you eat a lot of shite? Yes. Are you overweight? Have been. Don't go out on a Saturday night, drink 15 pints and get a hatchet in your head. Right, that puts unnecessary pressure on the mm. NHS. Do you not think in hospital you always want a side room? Well, a single a room. room? Aye, it's a room in your own Where'd you get your other f***ing holiday in? <laughs> and that's still to come, but first... I've been on the phone for 40 minutes. Hanging on the phone for 40 minutes, NHS 24. It's going to take 24 hours for the answer. Hello? Hello, dear... I need to talk to a man. Well, if you got a man, I don't mean you. Because I've got man things. What do you mean? But the Bobby. I've got a phone. I fucking cut me out. Anyway. So is the NHS and life support, do we need to turn it on and off? <laughs> life support right I've got do not resuscitate <laughs> t- tattooed on my chest mm. uh, the NHS look the NHS it's a fantastic thing it's the problem is there are too many people they're not taking care of themselves they're sticking their sticking their bobies where they shouldn't get stuck I mean I'm not talking about myself I just a few pals of mine anyway <laughs> what about the NHS so everything so we we'll start with I mean the NHS is under pressure so GP uh, surgeries, first of all, try to get an appointment with a doctor. Oh, I mean, I mean that's the worst. I mean, I, I, you know, you've got a different doctor for me. It works different. I mean, I think my doctor's all right. You just phone up in the morning at 8 o'clock, but it's like the wacky races. The line's open at 8 o'clock in the morning and everybody in the east end of Glasgow sitting there like waiting to get out the trap so they start at 100 metres and then die all that fuck and hang up die all that die, and then it's only I don't know how many lines I've got but only a few can get through so you dial with your phone and dial with your mobile see that's where I've got the that's where I've got an edge I've got two phones you see and then and then you get through and you'll normally be seen that day uh-huh. which I think that doesn't happen with your doctor no, so with our doctor, you do have to phone early, right? But then they triage you. But we're the same. You've got to phone early in the morning, so it's like now when you phone a takeaway. They triage you. Aye, they triage you. Now though, when you phone, like I, I always say it's like phoning the takeaway because you've got a few phones going. So my wife will be in the landline. I'll be on my mobile trying to get through to the doctor at eight o'clock. But they triage you first of all. But you got to get past the gatekeeper, the receptionist. I don't know that it happens with my doctor surgery. They don't seem to be terribly nosy because I think it's East End of Glasgow, maybe doing where you are. Then, because if I, I think if you go, if you're phoning my doctor surgery, the sort of clientele that my doctor surgery has, uh, what seems to be the problem, sir? None of your fucking business, putting through to the doctor. I think. We're a bit more mm. straight up. They just go, certainly I can fit you in. Are you okay for ten past ten? Thank you. The problem with the problem with us staying bigger is the woman who takes the calls, her daughter goes to the same nursery. So she's like, Oh, how's Morgan getting? So uh, and so that, that, see that's a problem, then it's not confidential. And before you know it, she's doing the woman's institute saying you've got a big wart in your bobby. You see, that's that's a problem. She knows everything about you now. You're riddled with hemorrhoids and, well, everybody knows it anyway because he's telling everybody on this podcast. So it's hardly a big secret. <laughs> you see, you're, you're walking through a tune and going, hey, hey, hemorrhoid man, get it up, yeah. Anyway, so, aye, they, they don't do that with my doctor surgery, but the fact that they're familiar and everybody knows each other and a wee tune... That's a problem. That is a problem, very much so, especially if you've caught the wart for her. You caught the wart, you caught for her, right, no, okay, no. aye, but fair I think, enough. I think, uh, so you've got to get past the receptionist, but they always sort of try and push you towards a phone call, first of all, rather than a face-to-face, and then the doctor's got to phone you back. So they could phone you any time, you could be at work, you could be on the toilet, you could be doing so you, right. 
Aye, because that's the thing. What happens if you're maybe you're in Asda or, so, or what is it, Marks and Spencers, <laughs> and Wait. you've got a personal problem, <laughs> and you're standing in the fruit aisle or something. Uh, hello, this is Doctor. What's his face? What's his face? Your problem? Well, uh, Doctor, sorry, could you speak up? I can't hear you. Well, Doctor, every time I have a pish, it's burning. Uh, uh, excuse me, I've got a pound of bananas, please. Aye. Aye. That's mental. I'll put this over then. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's mental. Aye. That doesn't work. But sometimes you'll be phoning and hands free in the car. And they'll phone you when you're driving somewhere and you could have MD in the motor. Well, you can hear the phone call outside the motor anyway. Do you know when you're in your car, you can uh, you, you you hear punters in the car mm. on the phone. You can hear the call. Aye. Some guy trying to get his wife back or something. She, she's left him and she's sitting in the morning. He's going, come back, Carol. I love you. You know what I mean? I'm going, what the fuck? You're just standing next to the car saying, I wonder how this will go. <laughs> Sometimes they'll just pap you on the practice nurse. A practice nurse? Oh, I feel sorry for us practicing on you. Sometimes you've got to send photos to them. So the doctor will phone you and say, can you send well, us a Well, that's a criminal offence. <laughs> it's a criminal offence. Under the law of Scotland, it is a criminal offence to make somebody accidentally or inadvertently look at a pornographic image, to cause somebody to look at a pornographic image. And it's punishable by... A four hundred pound fine uh, as a first offence. So, well, it's hard. You to... take a photo of your bobby, right, Aye. and send it to the doctor. But what if you miss dial? What if you accidentally send it to everybody? What What if it's on your phone and and then you've sent it? I mean, that's pornography. Well, it's not a pornographic image if some somebody's not chugging her the water in my willy. There's a lot of sick people out there, by the way. There's a lot of weirdos. You never know. Everybody's... You, you should watch that internet. There's some weird stuff on it. Be careful out there, kids. There's a lot of deranged stuff out there because I've really looked. Take it for me. <laughs> take it for you. That sounds I, weird. <laughs> don't, don't take it for me. <laughs> I'll, anyway, that's the point. There's You don't know what's out there. But Even your minuscule, insignificant, warty banger. <laughs> Could be somebody's cup of tea. Because you're at the age now, you've even got to send samples through the post, have you know. Well, it, well, that was a mate of mine, right? right? So, when you get older, right? We get the bowel cancer test, mm -hmm. right? When you're over fifty, and it's good. That's a good thing in Scotland, because you, 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 what you do, you do a jobby, right? And you know that way, and you know you you, you don't do it in the pan because you need to lift it back out. You need to get a sample. You get a wee thing, a wee sample thing. You scrape the jobby and put it back in its wee holder and you send it through the post to Dundee. Yeah. It all gets checked in Nine Wells Hospital in Dundee. That's where they all go. And then they tr detect if there's any blood in it and then they send you for a folly up. But we'll get that in a minute. But a mate of mine, he used to work on the rigs, right? Mm -hmm. And you need to get a medical to go in the rigs. And what he, what happened with him, he, he went for a medical and then they took pee samples and all that and he says, we need a sample of your stools. Mm -hmm. And he went, uh, right, I've, how do we do that? I'm no needing a jobby. I mean, he was going to sit there. That's okay. He gave him in day one and he gave him a, he gave him a kind of a plastic holder and an envelope, a padded envelope. <laughs> And he said, do a jobby into that and send it to us. Right. <laughs> I <laughs> thought this was hilarious. So he had to do a jobby and put a sample of his jobby in this, like a Petri dish thing, right. and put it inside this padded envelope and send it through the... What did, through he, did he phone them up and say, my shite over there in a jiffy? Is that what he <laughs> that's, that's good that you could have your own podcast for that part. Of, right? But that's exactly what happened, right? He sent a jobby through the post. Now, what, what if that got lost in the post? I mean, it's a turd in the post. Imagine it accidentally gone to somebody's house or it's in a sorting office. Or even worse, they send it back to you. <laughs> Return to sender. Right? You, can, you can imagine that going through a rang house and the woman just hung up and said, what shite have you been buying? Literally. <laughs> <laughs> have you been buying shite off the internet again? <laughs> Literally, right? I know. But, I mean, it was just a shite. Imagine it gets damaged. Now, imagine... What the fuck? The, you see the mad machines... 
on on the telly with the, the processes or the mail. Imagine it it smashed it up and it was shite oh. everywhere and everybody's letters get covered in shite. I mean, it's just, it doesn't bear thinking about it. Well, it's Fred McCauley that tells you to send your shite through the post. Oh, he's the bowel cancer voice over at the bowel cancer. He's a man. And he's got a very trusting voice. Yeah. I think you would. If Fred asked me to have a shite in an envelope, I would do it. Fred's got that kind of gravitas. Aye. He would make me want to shite. <laughs> <laughs> no offence, Fred. We're only joking. <laughs> God. So... Good back to GPs then. What do you think of this whole you got to phone and then get invited down? And I think it's the way it is. I mean, I don't mind it. How it works for me, how you doing? I got a problem. You know, if it's in GP hours, can I see the doctor? No problem. And then you go down and you see the boy or the, 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 the lady or the, the, the doctors. And invariably... The doctor will take a look at me and go, right, what seems to be the problem? And he knows what the problem is. I've not been looking after myself. That's the problem. Right. But he's he's got a good bedside manner and he'll say, right, let's get that. Uh, let's maybe put you on some antibiotics or some tablets or anti-inflammatories, depending on what the issue is. And that's me treated. But it's the placebo effect. Mm. You will see a doctor, and if you ever notice this, you, you're not feeling quite yourself, you're not feeling very well, and you'll go and see the doctor and you'll start feeling better after you've seen the doctor, because he'll reassure you and give you some tablets and send you on your way, and you'll go to the pharmacy and you'll get your medication mm -hmm. and you'll, you'll not complete the course. Nobody ever completes a course of antibiotics. It's a bit like a college course. In fact, you're more likely to finish a college course than a course of antibiotics. But but you're feeling better. And God bless the old NHS. But the problem is, people don't look after themselves. Don't drink too much. Don't eat a lot of shite. And move a bit more. And you'll be all right. See, and bigger when you go for your prescription, they always seem excited to see somebody that's under 60 when I go in. Really? Because <laughs> it's just like a curie old folk. Ah, there's a lot of old codgers doing it because bigger's one of the places where people have done well in their life. It's where they go to die, isn't it? <laughs> You've just started early. I've started early. Yeah. yeah. They've been living in a scheme somewhere in Lanarkshire all their life, working all their days, and they've made a bit of wedge. And they sell their flat or something, then they move to bigger. They buy a big telly, join the bowling club, sit in their arse and eat their to death. <laughs> God bless us all. See, the thing is, if you can't get an appointment at bigger, out of hours, they'll send you to Hamilton. God, I hate these bullshit musicals. You're meant to get eight to ten minutes with a doctor. Eight to ten minutes? That's the that's standard concept. Wait, you're shagging them? <laughs> Who needs eight to ten minutes with a doctor? You need two minutes. What's the problem? You get it out and the doctor says, ah, I know what that is. There you go, treatment for Spanish fly. <laughs> Whatever <laughs> that is. <laughs> Was that a Spanish person catches her knob and her zip? Very good. So still to come, <clears throat> what famous Scottish celebrity called Glasgow Da this week? A voice note from one of our listeners and details of how you can win two tickets to the Glasgow Comedy Festival on Sunday the 17th and the 31st of March at Blackfriars. The other thing, the NHS has been privatised, even things like the wee tele, you've got to pay for that wee tele to watch as That's well. That's right. I mean, it's shocking. £17.50 if they watch half an episode of Homes Under a Fucking Hammer. To be honest, it would only take me half an episode to get off in Martel Maxwell. <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> the problem with the NHS here is they only have two acute beds per thousand of population, whereas in Japan they've got eight acute beds. I've got a cute bed. It's got a Motherwell duvet cover. They can't find enough beds for folk. Well, we just do what we did in the army. Top and tail them. One up at the top, one down at the bottom, sleeping next to somebody's feet. There you go. <laughs> so that's how you would, if you were health secretary, you'd solve the, the crisis with top and tail and folk? Uh, aye, I'm saying that in difficult times require difficult solutions. And I get old people don't want to die alone, do they? So I guess that'd be good to have a pal, a pal beside them. <laughs> so what's the what was the last thing you had to go to the doctor's with well 
That's a good question. Because um, as you know, I'm a, I've got a loyalty card. <laughs> I mean, it basically stamps my card. If you do nine visits on the trot, you get a tenth visit for nothing. <laughs> so the last time, I don't know. Ooh. Oh, fa- I, because you know I've got it's an age thing. It's I've got a lot rang with me because I let myself go a bit, you know. Mm-hmm. And the stress of bringing you up obviously has compounded all my medical conditions. But it'll be it'll be gout or something, or a sore stomach, or a bit of diarrhea, or novo virus, or itchy ears, or gout. Is it in the gout? Eighteen hundreds? Is it? A gout. Is that the thing? <laughs> is that a thing? It's a thing. Aye, I, I know it's an old thing, an old fashioned thing, where rich people only used to get it because you get it for apparently a, a rich lifestyle. You know, if you eat a lot of heavy meats and you bevy too much. Oh, so well. as you know, I like steak pie and lager, and that's what gives me gout. That's responsible for the gout. Isn't I it? know. I mean, I should really, you know, eat chicken and a bottle of water. So you're happy with GPs at the moment, you think it's all going well? Oh, abs- hey, by the way, absolutely, the NHS, i tell you something, the NHS is a phenomenal thing for the people of the UK. They, they get free healthcare. See if you want to know how lucky you are, go to America. Go to America and get ill. Go to America and start shiting yourself to death, right? And then see how much it costs you when you go to see a doctor. And then you go and see a doctor and all your conditions are only covered and your medical insurance is sky high. It only covers so much and then you have to pay the rest. You have to sell your house. You end up ill and fucking homeless. No chance. We are very lucky in this country to have the NHS. And what we should do is take a bit more care of ourselves. And no burden the NHS unnecessarily. So don't go out on a Saturday night, drink 15 pints and get a hatchet in your head. Right, that puts unnecessary pressure on the NHS. If you're pissed out, you're not, and you see a man coming towards you with a hatchet, get in a taxi, get out of there. People's confidence in the NHS is probably at the lowest at the moment. But they- That's just, no, uh, no, no, no. That's newspapers. Who are the fucking mouthpiece of the Tory party and the establishment is saying all that. They have underfunded the NHS for years. That's what they're doing. They've underfunded it for years. So at Disney, at, at Disney perform as well as it should. They need to pay the doctors more, pay the nurses more, and they need to put, fund it properly. But what they're doing is the NHS is failing. All this bad publicity and newspaper thing. And then they basically turn and people say, oh, it's all shite, we need something else. It's bollocks. The NHS is fantastic. It's just been underfunded for years. But it still goes without saying, uh, you, you should take a bit better care of yourself. And I've learned that the hard way. Because you know I had a stroke, right? And it was just a mild stroke, thankfully. It was a shot across my bows. And I went in and he says, well, Glesgada, let's see what caused the stroke. Have you ever smoked? Oh, aye. You take a drink? Of course. Uh, did you eat a lot of shite? Yes. Are you overweight? Have been. Uh, have you got high blood pressure? Absolutely. How's your cholesterol? High as fuck. House! I want it stroke bingo. <laughs> I mean, I was doing everything wrong and know a lot right. And they go, and do you ever walk, Glesgada? Fuck off. Right. So, Aye. you've got to change your life. Aye. And to be fair to you, you've been off a drink now for over three days. days? <laughs> Aye. Aye. Uh, yeah. Come on, right, just don't tell everybody about it. You've got to live your life, but don't be a mad skull. What do you think of the strikes then, and sort of junior doctors? I think they're absolutely strike? perfectly justified. So you I mean, a doctor, a doctor, what does it take to become a doctor? Five years, and it's a difficult thing. I mean, an accountant or a lawyer or just some arsehole profession. I mean, what do they do? Fuck all, a doctor. That's an important job. Who needs lawyers? Bunch of wankers, accountants. I don't need an accountant to tell me I'm fucking skint. But a doctor, doctors are valuable. Yet lawyers and accountants make more than doctors. Something's wrong with our society. But some doctors... Shite comedians make more than doctors. (laughs) And that's wrong. What do you think of the private sector then? Doctors then work in the private sector and then... Fair fucks to them. Fair fucks to them. 
what you're saying that they shouldn't be allowed to do that. If you can make a bit of money on the side, panhandling for rich panthers, fair enough. But that's part of the problem, though. Is like if you go got money and you can get in the private sector, you get seen quicker, and that's why people they go and they go A and E, for instance, because there's something wrong with them. They probably got pissed and fell down the stairs, right? That's happened to me, right? So what happens is you go up to A and E and says it's a four-hour wait, and you go, "This is shit. I'm going private." You're not going private because you've not got any money, and just don't be an asshole and get drunk and fall down the stairs. So the point is, right? They say I'm going private. The NHS is shit. It's bullshit. But the fact that the private sector exists, you've got this other thing that's beautiful and easy to eat, but it's cost you a fortune to access it. It's like folk that say, I waited 12 hours in A&E. It's like, if you're having to wait 12 hours, I don't think you need a &E put up Well, is that true? I, I don't know if that's true. I, that's maybe, if it has happened, that's a very extreme example. Mm. But any time I've ever been in A&E, and I've been in Saturday nights, when it's like P.T. Barnum's horror circus. Mm -hmm. And and I've been seen two, three years I've waited. I've got a pal that works at Glasgow Royal as a doctor. That must be an A&E? Aye. And it's, oh. and it's brutal. And they, there was a massive punch-up at a wedding. And loads Brilliant. Of, aye. I and like a good wedding. <laughs> I like a good fight at a wedding. A good punch-up. I'm seeing you keep them apart. Genuinely, the nursing staff, when they came in, were saying bride or groom and putting them each side of the room. <laughs> Fuck off. Genuinely. Fuck off. They were, honestly. Uh, and the uh, and I thought God that, bless the old NHS. You can just Brilliant. imagine an old nurse taking ownership of that situation. I would have kicked their asses. <laughs> if it still was kicking off an hospital, I'd have jailed every one of the fuckers. It's mental how you've got security in hospitals now, though, isn't it? It's awful. It's absolutely awful. But when people are on drink... You see the worst in people through drink. And if people get like that when they're drunk, I think they shouldn't drink. But they're all on drugs and everything, some people know. And they need their asses kicked. Right. If you can't behave yourself on drink or drugs, don't take them. The worst thing about hospital for me is when you have to go in the uh, four beds to a room and you get some, no disrespect, some nut jobs. If you're in a hospital ward, and there's somebody in there as well who seems a bit off. In their defence, they're probably no well. Otherwise, they wouldn't fucking be there. Heaven forbid, right, you, you get something wrong with you. I mean, I've seen things. I've been in hospital and I've seen people hallucinating and for whatever reason, they've had surgery or the transplant surgery or the the problems with substances. God God love them. They're they're no well. But there was one time <laughs> when I was in the hospital, there was this guy and visiting time, right? Now nobody ever came to visit this old boy and I felt sorry for him. So there was six beds in this ward and I was in one one of the one of the beds. Nobody ever visited this old boy. And during visiting one time Everybody else is visiting round the bed, I think. No, you weren't there. Already. And everybody, five beds, all visiting. He decided to go for a shower at this point. And you know when you're in hospital, they put that thing in your vein, a cannula or IV, something it's IV, called. IV. Whatever, an iron vein. And he had one to hook him up to things, right? And he was in the shower during visiting. <laughs> and I, I don't know what happened, but he must have obviously been in the shower and pulled the cannula out. Right. And he's, he's, obviously, <laughs> he's obviously went, fuck this, and pulled it out. And it's... <laughs> Hey, blood shooting out like that scene in Robocop where he sticks the thing in his neck, oh. right? Clarence Bodiger's neck and <laughs> blood shoots out, right? It was like that. And he came out the shower, bollock naked, blood pissing out his, his wrist. And he went, nurse, <laughs> nurse, and fucking what a chomper he had on him. Right, nurse, <laughs> nurse, I'm bleeding. All the way in, so I'm screaming, <laughs> 
<laughs> what they scream at his blood and his bobby. Well, they were obviously all staring at his cock. I mean, I see you see a cock, you go, well, there's a cock, right? <laughs> That's what happens, right? When you see actors doing a nude scene, you're not looking at your performance, you're staring at his cock. That's what we do. It's like naked attraction. Nobody remembers their face. They're always staring at their cock. That's what we do in Britain because we're sexually repressed. We should just have cocks or other place where you go, actually, a fucking cock. <laughs> but we, we don't. We don't go, oh, a cock, you oh, fucking, oh, dirty bitch. Oh, there's somebody's bobby. Oh, there's a bobby. Because the way we look at nudity in this country is fucking insane. We're so repressed sexually. You should have fucking bobies in every corner and you go, it's just a fucking bobby. <laughs> so did somebody fix his bobby or his any IV or whatever? Oh, well, the, the, the nurse is, oh, it's Mr. Fuck, good God. <laughs> he took him back in and the shower and then, then they obviously dried him off and stopped him bleeding and put him back in his bed. The thing room, you know, the curtain. Aye. Aye, uh, the, the, the non-soundproof curtain that's obviously... I love how they, they, they pull that curtain for privacy <laughs> and you, you hear it. Because it was bad for me because I had to get an anal stretch. For my an pi- anal stretch? <laughs> for my piles, they had to give me an anal stretch. Oh. And and the worst thing was the, the, the ward round because everyone's obviously hearing. Uh, so Mr Mitchell, uh, we've performed an anal stretch and, and everybody's hearing this, which I don't want. They put a vice up your arsehole and twist it until it's... Yeah, I know, they, that's, it's, and it's a good treatment. Aye. Well, I've seen it online. I mean, I know about it. I don't know how I know about that. People, I've got a lot of time in my hands. Aye, so that's what I got from my piles. Yeah. But do you want... I mean, how big was the circumference? I mean... Well, before or after? Well, bef- be- well, after. Be- before it was like... I mean, could you go a hamster up there? Uh, no. No, not Well, d- hamsters can fit into wee species. You probably could have got a... A moose? I am, like, a tiny moose, a 5P moose. A 5P moose? A circumference. 5P circumference. Mo- mooses can get any small holes. Mooses? Mice? Mice. Fucking school, did you go? Right. Oh, moose is so, a big massive thing, isn't it? Like Canada. <laughs> no, I know a fucking Canadian moose. A moose. <laughs> to a moose, we sleek at Coor and the Tim is beastie. The time they stretch my arse, I probably could have got a moose up there for Canada. But no, it went for a 50p to probably a 10p. For a 50p, t- well, that's no, a five, smaller. a 5p to a 10p. A 5p Basically, to a 10p. Basically, so I could shite. Well, if it was an all two bob, you'd be in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Thank so, God the currency's smaller now. Aye, so it, it basically helped. It helped me be able to shit. Right, how, how long did it keep that thing in? No, they. Do, it's a. It's a there and then procedure. They do. Oh, it's straight back out. Aye. Once the moose is in, <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> 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 See you little, uh, there's the wee wheel, just enjoy yourself. It's like when I fart, my wife said that smells like a dead rat, I'm like a dead moose. It's like a rat crawled up your arse and died. <laughs> aye. 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 Very good. But uh, See, with ambulance waiting times, the top category of an ambulance are most serious. They've got to wait seven minutes and it's called a purple incident. A purple incident? Mm. That's what happens when I jam my cock in a drawer. So what do you think of this? So some people waiting in ambulances for twelve hours. Well, I wouldn't even wait. Well, again, it's 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 an extreme case, but it's propaganda. You need to watch. This is the newspapers are putting out propaganda stories that the NHS is failing, so they can bring something else in. It's pure propaganda. It might have happened, but they're magnifying the story. Because Richard Branson's got. A lot of private stuff with the NHS. Never trust a hippie. <laughs> End of story. <laughs> I wouldn't wait 12 hours in any. I wouldn't wait 40 minutes for a ride at Disney. 40 minutes is probably quite good if you could get a ride. <laughs> but My mother-in-law got her hip done through the NHS, but they sent her to Ross Hall for it. Good honour. Good honour. Because that's what they, they privatised to get the waiting list done. Oh, good on them. It would have cost them just as much anyway to treat her in the hospital, so fair enough if there's space there, no bother. But do you not think it's bad that some private surgeons then see clients through? So if you go in for private work and something goes wrong, you're going to end up in an NHS hospital because they don't have A&E there. So you're telling me, if you went in to get your, your ring box stretched, right? Well, you were in, if you'd done it in Ross Hall... Right, and they were stretching your ring box, and they 
the machine went mad and blew your ass apart. You're telling me they wouldn't treat you there and then they would go, all oh, right, and he's, look, you better get him up to the Royal. If it was life threatening. Or, well, I'd well, be the Surgeon General. Aye. If it was like, if your ass exploded, that's life threatening. <laughs> well, uh, you're telling me they wouldn't treat you there and then? No. Come on. They would take you straight to any. They don't have any in these private hospitals. So what happens when rich people get pushed and fall down the stairs? They're fucked. What do you mean they're fucked? Well, they'll go to A and E. They can't. If rich, if no, rich, there must be a no. Right, right. What about right? What about if a millionaire, a guy worth a hundred million pound? You telling me if John Boyle, <laughs> the ex Marwell chairman, who's worth about a hundred million pound. Uh, well, he, he was the owner of Marwell, so he probably lost about 50 million. So maybe he's worth 50 million. If he got pushed and fell down the stairs, he's not going to any. There, there's a, must be a private facility that's run by the Illuminati that treats <laughs> rich people. How would they? John, if you're listening, <laughs> phone us in and let us know. How would they get there? The the back copter comes and get them. There's, <laughs> no. there's, this is with these UFOs, right? These UFO sightings. It's the Illuminati's private ambulance. If a rich person fell and smashed their head on them, they would go to he John Boyle would go to Wishaw. Wishaw. No <laughs> chance. He would because the papers would know about it. It would be in the Wishaw Press and the Murray Well Times. <laughs> John Boyle clocked with a cracked head open in Wishaw General, sitting with all the, the proletariat. No chance. So they would they would get him to a stage that he was stable and then he would be asked to transfer. John Boyle pipe. could buy Wishy General and get seen straight away. I'm telling you, he's there's an A and E for rich punters. They're not going up to the Royal. There's somewhere they would go if they were if they were injured. If you're a rich person listening to this or watching this, please tell us where you go if you slip me your arse and crack your head open. And they'll probably phone in and say, I don't fall down the stairs, I'm rich, I live in a bungalow. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, think in hospital you always want a side room? Well, a, a single room? room? Aye, it's a room in your own way. Where'd you get your other fucking holiday in? <laughs> no, they do. <laughs> That's what they've got. That's yeah, what... yeah, wanker. You know what? You are a traitor to the fucking working class. In fact, you're no working class. You're never there to work in your life, you wanker. This, this is the problem. All these arseholes, they, they're not taking care of themselves. They're needing their arseholes stretched <laughs> and they're wanting it done in private. You're lucky you're getting your arsehole stretched at all. In fact, I'll put my boot up it. I'll stretch it for you. <sighs> <laughs> God save us. See, I get transferred to a side room because I sort of smushed the, the nurses and they put me in a side room. Wait, because what? They, I smushed them. You mushed them? <laughs> no, I smushed them. You smushed them? I we sweet smoothed them, sorry. We smoothed them? I we sweeties. Like I gave them the odd, I don't know, some sweeties and they put me in a side room. This is madness. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, I get I get transferred to a side room or my own side of the It was probably because the rest of the people in the ward were <laughs> going to fucking kill you for your bullshit. Probably if you're in protection. Probably put you in solitary confinement, you ball bag. Unbelievable, man. <laughs> do you know, I think it's embarrassing as well when they do the ward round with the nurses and the, the consultant and then... And they've got students. Did you ever get students? I had students Aye. looking at my bum, my ring piece. Well, I never had problems with the, the ring box. Well, no. Well, when you're 50 odd, you get checked. Your prostate gets checked. So they get a finger up. Oh, really? Have a wee feel for barnacles and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, because your prostate enlargement, you've got to be checked for that. But. No, I don't mind. Students are going to learn somehow. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. You, they need patients to practice on. I've got to watch that because the tablets I take for my hair transplant enlarges my prostate. So I've got to watch Is that right? Aye. Fucking hell. <laughs> so if I ever get checked for prostate, I've got to let them know or else they'd basically put me in six rounds of chemo. Genuinely. Right. That's bad. Aye. So I need to just... See, you've, you've, you've merely added to your problems. Aye. Oh, no. doesn't matter. It's fine though. Anyway, God bless the NHS. <laughs> That's all I can say. What about uh, people leaving the profession because they're under so much pressure? It's sad, but it's up to them. They're, as an individual, they're entitled to go and work for whoever they want, make as much as they can to live their life. I but 
if it was properly funded, go back to the initial point, if they were funding them enough, I mean, let's be honest, what do nurses have today? You can't even begin to imagine what a nurse has to put up with on a daily basis, an eight hour or ten hour shift. I know. You couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. No. Some doctors work 24 hour shifts, which I thought was incredible. Uh, I heard that. 24 hours. Well, they're on call for 24 uh, hours. They're raging if they have to leave the house when they yeah. get a call in the well, house. Well, that, that's what it is. Just talk it through. You the know, time. that's what it is. Mm. They're on call. They're, you know, they're there to react to things, but they're there available should they be needed. Well, it's fair enough. But like when comedians were on call for junglers, that was a great. Used to get paid. That's right. Used to get paid double money to be on call. Aye, especially at Christmas time and New Year, <laughs> you're on call. You're the spare in case nobody turns up, Aye. and you you would go to the. <clears throat> well, what would happen is, I used to be at home <clears throat> and get paid. Yep. And I'd be on standby. I wouldn't book a gig. I was told to be on standby just in case somebody never turned up. I would always take a gig, take the risk. Mm, no, I never did. I'm, I was <laughs> happy. I was happy to sit in the house on top money and do fuck all. And then you'd get the phone call at like five to seven. Oh, like. no. Phone call at five to seven and I'm pissed out my nut. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, I've got half an hour to sober up. <laughs> right, I think this would be a healthy point in the show to listen to a wee voice note. Let's get down. What do you think Scotland's chances are at the Euros this year? Scotland's chances at the Euros? Well, let me tell you, my man, this is the best unit we've had for 50 years. And I know, I've seen them. The 70s team was brilliant. This is a great team. There's no superstars, no big heads in the team. They're a team. I think we are on the verge for the first time in history of getting through the group stages, getting into the second phase, and I'll be there in Germany. Glasgow does going to be there, and I'm confident. But you know what happens when the jocks are confident? We fuck it right up. <laughs> Make a right arse here. Because I remember 78, we were going to win the World Cup. Look what happened there. <laughs> so thank you for that voice note, James. And you've won two tickets to any Glasgow Da live show. So let's go for another one. Hi, Glasgow Da. I was just wondering, are you a sweet or savoury man? And what's your go-to snack? Oh, right. Uh, there's two things. Right, I'm, I'm, I'm sweet and savoury. Right. First of all, savoury. My go-to snack is that... Mega delicacy that's known as a Scotch egg. Mm, love Scotch eggs. So I like Scotch eggs. But I also, when I'm out driving and coming home at night from the various functions which I attend, I'm partial to pulling over at the garage and buying, buying a double caramel magnum Whoa. while I'm driving. I love a magnum. Double caramel. Double. Double caramel. I mean, <laughs> what's the calories in that? It must be massive. <laughs> You're supposed to be looking after yourself. I, I've, I've, I'll be honest, I've, I've not had a double caramel magnum. I, what I've done lately is when I'm, when I'm coming the Langham motorway and I see the services coming up, I put the boot down and drive <laughs> past. If I, every new buy needs to be a double. Does it? Aye, double whiskey, double magnum. I'm an, I'm an, I'm, dude, that's the point. I, I'm an excessive person. I, aye, but I'm, I'm working on it. <laughs> and thanks to Derek there for that voice note. And I also, you've won two tickets to Glasgow Comedy Festival as well, or any Glasgow Dad Live show. And a Scotch egg's coming your way as well, son. <laughs> and a jiffy. <laughs> Now remember, you can call Glasgow Dat on 07386 891 812 if you want to contact him and leave him a voicemail or voice note on WhatsApp. Now the moment you've been waiting for. What, you got to shut up and get him? No, it's celebrity call time, so let's see who phoned Glasgow Dat this week. Hi, is that Glasgow Dat? Who's this? How you doing? It's Des Clark here. Yeah, you know, I uh, presented the Commonwealth Games in 2014. I was dancing about the stage with a big tonic tea cake. 
giant turn its tea cake. Well, I've got a caramel log coming through. Fuck off. Bit harsh. And thanks to Des Clark for being a good sport there. And of course, now we're on it, let's see what you decided was the best clip from last week. Hi Dad, you want then and the Waitrose? They buy something out there and do that more, he's a Fuck off. So search Glez Gada on Instagram, TikTok and Facebook and give us a follow. Don't stalk us, follow us. Be honest about it. And that's all we've got time for, but if you loved listening to this, give us a cheeky five star on Apple and Spotify. And if you loved watching us on YouTube, please hit subscribe and click on the wee bell so you get the next episode. Aye, click his bell then, because nobody's done that for a while. Now remember, visit glesgada.com for show tickets. We'll be back next week for another episode. From me, it's goodbye, and from him, it's... Fuck off! Do you know, the problem with the NHS as well is because people are so big, like obese people, they need to send them to vets to get CT scans. <laughs> is, that, is that a fact? <laughs> right, that's interesting.